Howdy folks, I'm Brian, and here's our weekly top Reddit picks. Am I a jerk for keeping my uncle's money because I was promised that I would not have to babysit? This summer, my family and my uncle got together in my grandmother's timeshare in Orlando to go to Disney World and Universal Studios. I wanted to go to Cape Canaveral while we were there too. As soon as I found out that my uncle was coming, I told my parents that I would not be babysitting for him on my vacation. They promised me that I would not have to do that. First two days went great. I got to have fun at the Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios. Day three was Epcot and my aunt and uncle started having a few drinks. My parents asked me to watch my cousins. I said no thanks. That I was promised that I would not have to babysit. My uncle pulled out a wad of cash and gave me $300. I was more than happy to babysit after that. It happened two more days. I watched my cousins three days and made $950. I used the money to have fun with the kids. I spent a little of it to get them snacks and drinks. Our meals were paid for by our parents. I took one day for myself and went to Kennedy Space Center. I had saved up my own money for the visit, but now I had cash. I paid for the VIP experience. It was amazing and I would highly recommend it. I also bought souvenirs that I would not have had the money for otherwise. I got a lightsaber and a droid and a wand at Universal. It turned out to be pretty good vacation after all. On my way home, my father said that I had played my joke long enough and told me to give my uncle his money back. I said, she's gone, and pointed at my souvenirs. I honestly wondered where he thought I had got the money to buy everything that I wanted. He went and told my uncle that I spent it all. I actually still had 200 bucks, but I wasn't going to mention that. My mom told my dad that I had earned the money and that they had broken their promise to me that I would not have to babysit. My uncle is upset with me at keeping the money, and my father thinks that I was greedy for taking advantage of the situation. I think that he means I tricked his drunk brother. Alright folks, our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for spending $45,000 of my husband and I's money to collect a $5,000 judgment from my ex? I'm a 45 year old female, and the only good thing about my ex-boyfriend is that he is the dad of my two kids, a 16 year old female and a 13 year old female. We split 10 years ago, we never married, I started wedding planning business shortly after we got together and hired him as an office manager. That's when the full force of his narcissism came to light. Basically he lied about his previous work experience and treated the credit card that I gave him for business expenses as his own piggy bank, flirted with other women, and was destructive and vindictive employee. I will take the responsibility, I jumped into owning my business and made some mistakes. I did not know at the time what was important or how to strategize. The business went bankrupt and our relationship blew up. I sued him for property destruction and conversion, basically the civil version of saying he stole from me, among other things. He humiliated me by saying that I was sexually harassing him. I was eventually awarded an amount that is around $5,000 today, factoring in interest. I thought that I had won because he had filed for bankruptcy before and could not for many years. He then started this game of chicken with me and I felt that I needed justice, especially because the cops refused to charge him for what he's done. It has been a game of whack-a-mole ever since. At first, he would quit jobs once we found out that he was working there. He worked under the table for a little while, lived with another girlfriend, and then moved to a state where you couldn't garnish wages. I spent countless hours with expensive lawyers, first fighting the case, which he dragged out, plus chasing him around, throwing around subpoenas. My ex has since developed a false sense of security and has been working openly. I told my husband that I wanted to get him to pay up before he files for bankruptcy or spends all of his money. He was upset because outside of the first $10,000 that I spent fighting this, $25,000 was our money. But legally, if I could just get my ex, I would collect the cost out of him as well. After I put down the $5,000 retainer, my ex quit his job and I realized that I would need a PI to help gather information. The retainer has all been but spent. I get that this sounds insane, but it is the principle of it for me. He made years of my life horrible. Yet, my previously supportive husband said that I, as one of the heads of household of our household, and every leader has to understand when a war is expensive, and at times the cure is worse than disease. He said that my ex will never make me financially whole, and that he did not want our money to keep funding this. I was furious, and we lapsed into a screaming match. 
and asked him to leave for the night. I could not believe that he was withdrawing support. We make $80,000 a year, we're frugal, but what was the point of the money if it wasn't used for things that we value? But now the investigation was bearing fruit. But I just wrote another check for $5,000 and anticipate having to write a third one. The check's funds came from transferring from our savings account. My husband is furious for that and said that I was setting a bad example for the girls. Am I the jerk for needing justice for the pain he caused me? All right, folks, our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for my boundaries with my sister? I have always traveled for my job, so when my deceased husband and I decided to have children, we hired a nanny to help out since he also worked full time. She helped during the hours that he couldn't be there. When he passed away, she became full time since I still had to travel. Sometimes she would come traveling with me if it was somewhere fun. When I'm not traveling, I want to spend as much time with my children as I can and really bond with them. I also have a rule in my family that I don't want to be responsible for their kids. You want to spend the day with us and hang out by the pool? Come on over. But the minute you leave my house, so do your kids. I've had a hectic last couple of years and still continue to live a busy life, so I didn't need my free time being spent watching kids who may or may not listen. This rule also applies with my nanny. Recently, my sister has been calling my nanny while I'm away, asking her to watch the kids because of an emergency. The first couple of times, the nanny said yes, but has recently brought it up to me because she's aware that she's had to spend more on groceries, gas, and activities, and didn't want me to think that it was weird. I called my sister and said that she will absolutely not bring her kids over unless I'm home, and she also plans on staying to watch them. She threw a fit. Drama has now ensued because she called the nanny and was told no. My nanny picked up the kids and left to go do something because she knew my sister would just show up. She did. She dropped her kids off on my porch and when my nanny noticed on the camera that they were there, she called my sister who didn't answer. So she called me and I called the cops. I am not messing around with her taking advantage of someone that I trust with my kids and possibly losing her. The cops picked up the kids and now there is a CPS case open because they couldn't get a hold of my sister for hours. My whole family is blaming me for not paying the nanny extra to take care of the kids. And I need to know that I'm not crazy. All right, folks, our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for taking close to $1,000 worth of face cream that was abandoned? My wife and I were in New York City today to celebrate our cousin's birthday. We took a train in and out of the city and left a bit earlier to get home in time to take care of our dogs. We were in a bit of rush, but we were super hungry and stopped for a quick meal at Shake Shack. We found a couple of bar stool seats and noticed a small shopping bag that had some skincare products in it, but no ID, wallet, or anything else. I checked. We didn't recognize the brand or the store name, and it was at the counter before we arrived. We were there for about a half hour or so and kept an eye on the bag, assuming that someone would realize that they left it and would come and get it. But that didn't happen, so we just took it when we left. Later, we sent a picture of the face cream to my brother's partner, who has worked in cosmetics for years. He told us that they were super expensive products that totaled nearly $1,000 after taxes. The single face cream retails for like $300 and there were other items in the bag and scolded us for not turning it over to the cashier. My wife feels bad because we hadn't even considered doing that, but I don't feel guilty at all because we didn't steal it from someone. They left it and it had been parked there for at least a half hour, probably longer. It's bad, but maybe we should have considered turning it into the cashier or even looking up and traveling to the store to return it and then let them sort it out. But that would have taken a long time. We were exhausted and we were already rushing to get home as it was. We genuinely, genuinely didn't think of it. In my opinion, if you've left something behind like that and didn't immediately retrace your steps to find it, then what happens happens. It's bad and I don't mean to put down someone who accidentally left something behind. It happens to all of us. But no, I do not feel bad to be the finder. Plus, I can't help but wonder that any cashier would have been just as likely to keep it too. Also, what realistically could they have done? It's not like a phone or a wallet that could have been traced to the owner. There was no receipt in the bag or anything. But maybe that's beside the point. Am I the jerk? Alright folks, our next letter is titled, 
Am I a jerk for saying that my mother-in-law acts as though she's in a relationship with my significant other? I am a 26-year-old female and my husband is a 32-year-old male, and he's a complete mama's boy. He'll call his mother for hours and talk to her and spend time with her more time than he does with me. I recently hit my six-month mark in my pregnancy and asked my husband to help me get ready with all sorts of things for the baby. He said that would interfere with the time that he spent with his mom and replied, yeah, but I need you more right now. And would you do this some other time, please? He gave me an offended look and said, you know my mom comes before you. I was just kind of shocked, but I explained to him that we just needed to get ready with a few things here and there and that I wouldn't need more help later in the week. He just ignored me and went to his mom's house. After a while, she called me and said I won in a snarky voice and I just bit my tongue and I said maybe I'll win next time and she hung up. I could hear my husband laughing in the background and that just angered me for a little while and I was walking around lifting my fold up bringing it upstairs. It hurt but I got it done. I decided to paint the nursery walls another day. Our anniversary rolls around a couple weeks later and I woke up and I got my husband's gift ready that day and I cooked his favorite meal. He came back from work and I was upstairs in the bathroom and then he left. I got all eager and happy that he was bringing some sort of surprise and waited in the living room. 30 minutes go by and I call him saying where are you and he replies oh I'm at my mom's house. I don't appreciate what I said about this, so please don't go too hard on me in the comments. And I said, she may as well be having your kid. You clearly seem like you're with her. I hung up the phone and it was probably on speakerphone. And minutes later, I got a bunch of texts from them saying that I shouldn't be so jealous, that I should respect my mother-in-law, and that I should maybe find something to do instead of being a bitter jerk. Am I the jerk? Update, I read through some of the comments and oh boy, my husband and I have been together for five years and we've been married for half a year. I never really noticed things like this because I'm kind of blind to these things. I think it all started when we got married because as soon as we did, she lived with us for about a month after she was going to be leaving all my all grown son. I think my mother-in-law is competing with me and I might even have to give my husband an ultimatum because after reading these comments, things could only get worse from here. I've talked to my husband after I posted this, I didn't tell him about it, and asked him why he visits his mom so often. His only response was that she's an important person in his life and he's grateful to her. BS. I've now only realized that my husband has been acting like he's married to his mom. I'm seriously considering getting a divorce because of what I have been reading. My mother-in-law has no intentions of changing her behavior. Thank you all for the input. I'm going to have a long discussion with my mother-in-law and my husband. All right, folks, our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for telling my daughter, a nine-year-old female, to stop being so lazy at school and then refusing to get her tested for dyslexia? So basically, I'm a 46-year-old male and my daughter is a 9-year-old female and she came back home yesterday with a badly graded essay. The thing is, it's not even a page long and it was full of spelling mistakes. It's not like they asked her to write a literary masterpiece or anything. This was really basic start of the year assignment for things that should have already been mastered last grade. We're not native English speakers so I won't bother giving examples, but it was pretty discouraging to see. Now, it's not the first time this has happened. In fact, she's been making bad grades since she started school. She's otherwise a really smart kid, eloquent, creative, and curious. So I'm not quite sure what the issue is. We've tried getting her a tutor, but nothing changed. At first, I gave her the benefit of the doubt because some kids are slower than others, but at this point, I'm convinced that she's just careless. Her brothers make good grades, so what's her problem? I'm getting quite frustrated because we want to send her to a private school and we're saving so that she can get into a good university and at this rate there's no way she's going to get into either. Anyways, yesterday she brought me the essay to sign and I got angry and I told her that she's being lazy and won't get far in life and that she should stop slacking off. It's not that hard to proofread an essay before handing it in. She tried convincing me that she had proofread it, which is obviously BS because of the amount of mistakes that were there. No one can convince me that this kid bothered to reread what she wrote. Some mistakes were just ridiculous and she should know better. She started crying and left the room. 
my wife thinks that I'm the jerk here. Apparently, there is a whole lot more of bad essays that I never even saw because my daughter avoids giving them to me to be signed by me when she can. This really made me mad. Of course, if she can get them signed by her mom and not face any consequences, she has no reason to change her behavior. I recognize that I might have been harsh, but I don't know what to do anymore. What is it going to be when she has to write university essays or even just write regular work emails? No one is going to take her seriously if she can't string two sentences together. I want to believe that she's a smart kid who's capable of more than this. My wife and I had a fight over it and we're still mad at each other. She wants to get her tested for dyslexia, but I disagree. I'm afraid having a label will only give her an excuse to slack off more. You can't just play the dyslexia card out in the real world. No one cares. So am I really the jerk here? I just want my kids to have a chance in this world. Clarification, the essay was in our native language, French. All right, folks, and our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for boycotting my daughter's wedding because she dated a married man? Two of my daughters, Tate, a 33-year-old female and Camille, a 27-year-old female, have dated married men. The family participated in Tate's wedding, but we are boycotting Camille's. I'm a 56-year-old female and my husband is a 58-year-old male, and we are both strongly against cheating of any kind, as is our entire extended family. However, the situation with Tate was different. Tate's husband of eight years, Mark, is the CMO of the company that my husband has been with for 12 years. Tate and Mark met when Mark was still married and Tate kept her dating life from us until my husband found out. We were all very upset. We raised our kids to respect marriages and that you mess with marriages at your own peril. Yet what could we do? My husband's supervisor supervisor reported to Mark. To upset either party would have been a one-stop shop to having to find another job. Mark was related to two members of the board of directors. We told Tate that we weren't happy with this, that cheating married men are famous for dumping their girlfriends so they can blame their moral shortcomings on her, and then society applauds him for coming to his senses. At least that's what happens where we live. But against all odds, Mark filed for divorce and proposed to my daughter. Tate asked for us to take part in the wedding, and the whole extended family thought about it, realized that Mark's ex-wife seemed perfectly happy rolling around town in her new Mercedes and bachelorette pad, and his son was posting thanking Mark for putting him through Duke University. Nobody seemed hurt, and we did not want my husband to be fired, so we went. Eight years later, Mark and Tate have a four-year-old son, his ex-wife Tate, the kids, and another grown daughter who Mark had with another woman all get along, often going on vacation together and giving each other presents. Tate works as COO of one of the businesses that Mark owns, and my husband now works closely with Mark as he's VP now. Everybody is happy and nobody was thrown on the streets. On the other hand, that's exactly what happened when Camille slept with a married man. She demanded that he leave his wife, and this caused a divorce where Camille and her lover are living on $35,000 a year in California. Her lover's wife lost her home due to this and is living off of slightly over $35,000 to support her and her child. The child... Beep. The wife is online saying how she has to fight to have the willpower to go on, and there are a lot of hard feelings, unlike with Tate. In light of this, the fact that she and her lover literally destroyed a family in every sense, when Camille invited us to the ceremony, I told her to find a stranger to bear witness. All of her siblings, the extended family, all wanted nothing to do with it. She set herself up for poverty, especially since she's living off a humanities grad student stipend. What she did could have driven the ex to a drastic action, and she should be thankful that the ex was strong enough to limit it to cryptic Facebook posts, which make Camille and her lover look like trash. Am I the jerk for telling Camille no thanks to watching the mess that she made of her life? Alright folks, and our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for not being upset that my wife cheated? So a bit of background. I was raised by hippie parents, and I guess that I think that it really rubbed off on me when I was starting to date. So I had a very free love attitude to dating and adult intimacy. I slept around a bit and had a few one night stands. I was involved with the polyamorous and open relationships 
and I think I would describe myself as aggressively pansexual. In my idea of a perfect world, having adult intimate time would be as socially acceptable as handshakes. I'd happily be intimate pretty much with anyone I know. But I know this isn't the norm. I'm well adjusted socially and I have a high degree of empathy, I think. And I understand that most people aren't like that. So I am happy being platonic friends with people. And even if I'm very attracted to someone, if they're not interested in me like that, I'm still happy to be friends. Then in 2015, I met my now wife. She wasn't like that at all. She was purely monogamous and felt that intimate time was very personal and intimate. We met each other through friends of friends and we vibed really well and enjoyed hanging out with each other. And then when we were chilling out at her house one day watching an Avengers movie and her housemates had to leave and it was just on the couch. And then one thing led to another and we slept together. After talking about where we were at, we decided to stay as friends, but we just liked hanging out with each other too much and then it happened again. And we had another talk, but I really liked her and I figured if I could do monogamy with anyone, it would be her. So I made my decision. Monogamy it was. And well, we grew together and apart from the odd, you know, craving for diversity, I was super happy and I feel like I was falling in love. So I proposed because I realized that I would choose spending the rest of my life with her over polyamory. We got married last year and we lived our happily ever after until last weekend. So my wife went to a work function. Originally, she had planned on being home no later than 10, but then just before 10, she messaged me saying that she was staying out and will crash at a friend's house. I didn't think it was a big deal. And I said, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Love you. She got back the next day and she was acting a bit, I don't know, noticeably a bit reserved and withdrawn. Figured that she must have been hungover. I made her a cup of tea and I asked her if she needed anything. She shook her head and said that she just wanted some alone time. I thought something might have happened and I said, okay, I'll be here if you need to talk. She didn't look at me and I was really worried that something awful might have happened. She kept being withdrawn over the weekend and I was really worried that something awful might have happened and kept running through different scenarios in my head on the terrible things that might have happened. On Monday, she went to work. I work from home and without a word, she came home and was still not talking to me. That was when I started putting my foot down. I wanted to respect her need for space, but I also was extremely worried about her and it wasn't characteristic of her to push me away. We always felt like a unit, like no matter what, we were always on each other's side. So I said to her, I need to know what's going on. Please, this isn't like you to shut me out. And that's when she burst into tears and told me that they went clubbing and that she met some younger guy who was really hot and they danced for a while and she got really drunk and they ended up going back to his place and being intimate. At this point, I laughed and I was like, oh honey, I was worried that something horrible had happened. And then she looked at me like I had just done something terrible and said, you don't care? And I said, it's not that I don't care. I just don't think of these things in the same way that you do. She claims that I have never cared about a relationship and asked me if I ever cheated on her. And I said that I didn't, but she's being so hard on herself and upset. Like if she made a mistake, she's punished herself more than I would have ever thought about doing. And also she was incredibly drunk and decision making when you're drinking isn't that good. I don't want to share this with friends and family to get their perspective because it's quite a private thing. She says that I'm a jerk for not caring, but like she's just punishing herself and I still love her. Am I really the jerk here? It just strikes me as incredibly possessive to be angry at her about it when I've always had this kind of free love mentality. All right, folks, our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for changing the wedding venue my fiance chose to something more flashy as a surprise? I'm a 25 year old male and I'm marrying a 24 year old female this coming October. We have both very large families, but hers is really poor and kind of traditional. As a result, my fiance has always been taught to go for the cheapest option throughout her life, whether we are going out to eat or buying clothes or going on holiday. Well, we've been planning the wedding and the choice of the venue was typical for her, a small local church where she was christened. Right off the bat, 
the place isn't suitable for the number of guests that will be invited, and I knew that she only chose the location because of money, which is not an issue. I spoke to my father and he agreed that he would fund a wedding abroad in Venice. I'm their only child, so getting married is a big deal, and he arranged transportation for all of the guests. He agreed to cover all the costs, so obviously I changed the venue and sent out the invitations. I knew that the money spent would make her anxious, and she has always dreamed of visiting Venice, so I waited to tell her until it was organized as a surprise. Well, she didn't take it well, and said that I was a massive jerk and that she had much preferred the church venue. She said that it was too embarrassing now to cancel it, that I've told people, and she seems really mad. But I'm confused since the venue was never practical and I'm wondering if I'm the jerk here or if she's overreacting. Am I the jerk? Alright folks, our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for reporting this girl's wildly inappropriate behavior to my manager? I'm a 27 year old male and I go to the pool every morning around 8 a.m. to swim before I work. I noticed that one of the lifeguards was very attractive and I started talking to her, then started going to the pool a little earlier so that I could have a little more time to spend at the pool before I had to leave. Yesterday I got there when they opened and she was the one that opened the gates to get in and she looked totally different than normal. During her first break, she went into the lifeguard office and I watched her put on her makeup. I felt like it was wildly inappropriate to put makeup on while you're at work. I left early and while I was on my way out, I noticed the pool's manager office door was open and he was in there. I stopped in to mention that she was putting on makeup while she was at work and that seemed unprofessional to me. He asked me a few questions and then said that he would talk to her. This morning I went into the pool and she wasn't there. I started to worry that maybe she had been fired, so I stopped by the manager's office on my way out again and talked and asked where she was. And he said that due to her wildly unprofessional behavior, he used air quotes and was acting super sarcastic and mocking, <laughs> that she had been moved to another pool and refused to tell me which one. He basically called me a jerk and said, not to talk to the lifeguards anymore. Am I the jerk? All right, folks, our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for not wanting my mother-in-law in the delivery room because she's been acting so weird since I got pregnant? I really liked my mother-in-law before I got pregnant, but since that point, she's been acting strange and I can't stand her. Almost like she's trying to one-up me or prove her place in her son's life. She didn't act like this prior to me becoming pregnant. So, since I got pregnant, she has been stopping in randomly with gifts for my husband. Things like tools, money, and jewelry. My husband hates jewelry, always has. The first time that she brought over a bracelet, I said, oh, I love that. I bought him one just like that, but he won't wear it. She said, well, I'm his mom, so he will wear it. It's a mom and son thing. Okay, weird, but whatever. He doesn't wear the bracelet. Then the money thing randomly trying to give him money and he hates it. He's expressed it multiple times. She won't stop it, however. She keeps saying, I want you to buy yourself something nice for once, etc, etc. Again, whatever, but it's just getting weirder. Like her randomly showing up at my doctor's appointments and telling the nurses that she's my husband's moral support and that she needs to hold him up. So, my baby shower was last week. I'm due in five days. She gets us a car seat, knowing that we already bought one. The car seat that we bought was $380 and it grows with a baby. The one that she bought us was $99 and it was an infant only car seat. She told him to return that we, the one that we got because this one that I bought has sentimental value because I bought it. Then she turns to me and says, I better get a phone call when the baby is coming so that I can be there to support my baby and starts rubbing my husband's back while smiling up at him and it just like grossed me out. I don't want her there and her weirdness since finding out about my pregnancy is just pushing me over the edge and I don't know what to do because she was not like this prior to finding out that I was pregnant. It's like a switch flip. My husband feels bad because we both know that this is not normal and he doesn't know how to deal with it either. But I still don't want her in that room. It's going to make me mad if I'm sitting there in pain and she's going around kissing his butt when he and I 
should be supporting each other for such a big life moment and changing event. But my husband says that maybe we should just let her in the room and see if it goes back to normal afterwards. I'm totally against it, not only because her presence is causing him to act awkward and reserved due to her weirdness, but because of her mere presence has been making me mad lately. Am I the jerk? I did add for context, she has two daughters and another son, all of which have children. My husband is her youngest and this is his first baby. She did not attend any of her other grandkids' births. Alright folks, our next letter is titled, I'm six months pregnant, a 25 year old female, and my boyfriend is a 28 year old male and he jumped out of a moving car on the highway during an argument today. I'm a 25-year-old female, and my boyfriend, a 28-year-old male, were on the way to an ultrasound this morning, which is an appointment that I had to make three months ago. He worked a night shift, so I told him that if he wanted to come along to the ultrasound, that I would drive so he can rest. We don't have a toxic relationship, and we don't argue much, but we got into what I thought was a small argument in the car. I had to fill up on gas and I started to fill up my tank and I asked him if he could finish filling it up for me. When he got back in the car, I noticed that it didn't cost as much as I thought it would and he told me he didn't fill it up all the way, to which I responded, next time fill it up all the way so that I don't have to stop again to get gas sooner. I paid for the gas, so it's not a money issue. Me saying this really set him off. He got in a really bad mood and was mad and kept saying, don't talk to me like that. I responded and said that I was sorry and next time I will ask nicer and that it's not a big deal in the first place. I just wanted to let him know for next time. He continued to get angrier and said that you don't understand. Don't talk to me like that. At this point, now I got mad and I said, you need to learn how to communicate with me better because simple conversations like this should not turn into arguments. And I was listening to him and apologizing to him and now he needed to listen to the way that he was talking to me. He kept getting angrier and at this point I got extremely angry and I raised my voice and I said, F you. When I did this, he opened up the car door. We are driving on the highway with lots of traffic. I slammed on the brakes and I was shocked and I said, please don't do that. I love you. We can work this out. And he jumped out and walked across the highway. I pulled off to the side and I texted him and called him just telling him to come back and that it isn't safe for either of us. He responded and said, I'm done with you. He did come back to the highway and get back into the car after 10 minutes and then said, take me home. But this ultrasound is important to me and has taken me months to get and I told him that I was going to go to the appointment in a calm tone. Of course I cried for like an hour because I'm pregnant and more emotional than normal. He went to the ultrasound without saying a word to me and after the ultrasound I went to the restroom and when I came out he was gone. He had Ubered home and taken all of the ultrasound pictures with him. I feel like he is completely wrong in this situation and that him putting me and our unborn child in harm's way over his emotions is completely unacceptable and scary to me. I had plans to fly where my family lives in two months and give birth and I'm thinking right now that after this I need to fly there now so I can feel safe and be around people who think rationally. However, I'm pregnant and my brain is definitely very foggy and I'm open to the fact that I could be wrong in this situation. I know that I shouldn't have raised my voice but I still don't think it's acceptable for him to put everyone in danger and is just still extremely angry with me but he doesn't really communicate so he won't talk to me. Alright folks our next letter is titled Am I a jerk for not helping my ex-husband and ruining his relationship with our kids? I'm a 35 year old female and I was married to my ex-husband for five years and we have two kids with him a six year old male and a four year old female. We divorced two years ago when I found out that he had another kid before we met and is a deadbeat dad to that kid. The fact that he hid it from me for seven years while we were together just made it worse. I knew it only when he was sued for child support. When we divorced, I used that information and the fact that the kids are too young to get full custody. He has visitation rights contingent on child support. I don't really need the money. I'm in a high income profession and my parents are quite wealthy too. Airtight prenup meant that he got nothing in the divorce. He works as a teacher and it doesn't pay much. He owed quite a lot to the other kid. 
current child support plus back payment installments. And this eats up most of his income. He doesn't own a home and living expenses here are very high. Basically, he hasn't paid child support for over a year now and as per court order has no visitation rights. I wouldn't have minded him visiting still, but he asked me for money to hang out with the kids. I used to give him it to preserve the relationship with the kids at least, but it came to the point where he was stealing from me. As in, he would ask for 100 bucks, but spend 20 on the kids max. He started doing this almost regularly, and when I confronted him, he accused me of leaving him homeless and penniless in the divorce, hence I owed it to him anyways. As much as I want the kids to still have a dad, I was tired of being taken advantage of. I stopped giving him money. He couldn't take the kids out anymore. Kids missed him, but I refused to budge on this. When they asked me, I would call him so they could speak to him. His family and friends started accusing me of driving a wedge between him and the kids, so I told them the truth, that I never stopped him, but stopped funding it. He is calling me a jerk for refusing to help him, ruining the relationship with his kids, and humiliating him in front of his family and friends. Am I the jerk? Just from the comments to clarify, if he wants to take the kids out anywhere, it's fine with me. He can even spend time at my home with the kids, which is okay too but he is refusing to even visit without me paying him first. All right, folks, our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for embarrassing somebody by pretending to be Japanese? Backstory, I'm a 20 year old female and I have a Japanese name even though I'm not ethnically Japanese. My mom is Korean and my dad is British. They met and fell in love while studying in Japan and they had me there after marrying. Well, we lived there until I was 14 before moving to the States. This will be important later on. Today, a group of my roommate's friends came over to study with her, and I happened to be in the living room when they arrived. They were introducing themselves to me, and when I said my name, I have a pretty common Japanese girl name, so it's pretty hard to be mistaken about its origin. And one of the girls made a disgusted face and laughed at me, saying that it was so dumb. She said that she was Japanese American, and that I was culturally appropriating her country as a white person. I tried to explain that I lived in Japan, Japan for a while and that was why, but she kept insisting that I was lying and that if I was telling the truth, then I would be able to speak the language. Since she put it like that, I started talking in, to her in Japanese, basically explaining where I lived there and asking which prefecture her parents were from, etc. She ended up stuttering through a sentence in an awkward manner before leaving in a huff. Later, my roommate told me that I embarrassed her by pretending to be more Japanese than an actual Japanese person and appropriating the culture. And her friends expected an apology. My roommate doesn't think that I did anything wrong, but now I feel bad. Am I the jerk? Alright folks, our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk? I was accidentally seen naked by a friend who watches our baby. I'm a 40 year old male and I was out for a jog and then I came home to shower. It sometimes takes me a little longer to get ready in the morning as I don't have a set time to be at work. On this particular morning, I decided to take my time to get ready. This meant that I was getting out of the shower while the babysitter was here. For some background, the babysitter is an actual adult friend of ours. Wanted to make sure that the creeps don't hijack this post. I will go ahead and I will get some of the questions that will be posted out of the way. Yes, she's attractive. She is one of those single type women who can't seem to find a reason for why she's single. I think it's because of something that we don't know, but that's a story for another time period. Also, I have no interest in cheating on my wife with this friend in any ways. Back to the story. Since I had just gotten out of the shower, I wrapped a towel around myself and I went to spend some quality time with the baby. We were laying on the floor and my kid was enjoying some tummy time and playing. We are really working on trying to crawl and move so our kid can stay on track developmentally. The babysitter walks into the room, has a seat on the floor, and starts playing with the baby as well. While rolling on the floor and playing with the baby, my towel comes open and my junk is exposed for the world to see. I casually cover myself back up and I continue to play with the baby. The friend slash babysitter immediately jumps up, starts grabbing her stuff, and then rushes towards the door. I start asking her what's going on, are you okay, is something the matter, and she says I can't believe you just did that. What's wrong with you? You're sick. And on and on and on. 
I'm like, is this because you saw me partially slash fully naked? And she said yes and slams the door on her way out while calling to work to reschedule the meeting and trying to get a hold of the babysitter i get a frantic call from my significant other a 37 year old female asking what i did to the babysitter slash friend i said nothing really my towel just happened to fall off while i was playing with the baby she goes off and telling me that i'm the jerk for doing this and that i should have put some clothes on and i shouldn't have been wearing a towel and so on and so forth i'm like sure cool whatever but you guys are making a big deal out of nothing. We're all adults in this situation, and we've all seen plenty of naked bodies. I didn't make any moves. I wasn't trying to suggest anything, and I definitely wasn't trying to hurt anybody's feelings. Friends and family have come down on both sides of the issue. So, internet, am I the jerk? Speaking of inappropriate posts, our next post is titled, Will I, Was I the Jerk for Not Impregnating My Sister-in-Law? I will keep this as short as possible. I'm a 35-year-old male, married to my wife, a 31-year-old, five years ago, and we've lived together for eight years. We had our first child four years ago and a second child a year ago, both boys. Her sister, 33, has been married for seven years and in that time has had one child, a boy. After the birth of her child, her husband was in an accident and can no longer produce another child. My sister-in-law and her husband approached my wife to see if I would be interested in donating in order for my sister-in-law to give birth to one more child. My wife thought that this was a great idea and made the decision for me to proceed with the process without consulting me. I was against it at first, but I came around to the point where I was willing to speak with a fertility doctor, but I let them know that I was not saying yes at this point, as the whole idea seemed weird as my kids was essentially be half siblings to this new child. Well, after the meeting with the doctor, it became very clear that this was not an option for my sister-in-law, and she does not work, and her husband only makes around 50 grand a year. They could not afford the procedure. They asked my wife and I to help offset the cost, but that was not an option that I was willing to explore as I only make about $85,000 a year, and we recently purchased a new house and are trying to invest in college funds, etc. It was a hard no for me, and my wife was okay with that, but I think that she would have found a way to get them some, if not all of the money. I told her that she could put that decision on me, and she did exactly that. Well, my sister-in-law is upset. She called me selfish, and it turns out that my sister-in-law knew that we had quite a bit of money set aside in the kids' college fund, as before the kids were born, my wife was working. And we put away a lot of money that we eventually turned into a college fund for our kids. We have roughly 45 grand set aside, which I don't think is enough, and we keep adding to it as we can. Anyways, a couple of days ago go by, and things seem to have calmed down, but my sister-in-law then asked my wife if she could essentially sleep with me in order to get pregnant. My wife was vehemently opposed to this at first, but after her sister explained that she wasn't attracted to me and that there would be no passion, it was just a means to an end. My wife thought that it might be a good idea. To be clear, my sister-in-law's husband is okay with his plan. My wife asked me to go ahead with it, but I refused. I told her that they can adopt a kid out of foster care if they want another kid that bad. Now, my sister-in-law is mad at me along with my wife as she believes that this would just be a good way to help them have another child. I'm standing by my decision and I've been sleeping in the spare bedroom since my heart no, but I'm starting to doubt and thinking that maybe I was unreasonable. So am I the jerk here for refusing to impregnate and sleep with my sister-in-law? I'm not gonna read all the edits, but I will read one, two, and five. Edit one, the money is in a joint account that requires two signatures for a withdrawal, so my wife cannot take the money. Edit two, my sister-in-law doesn't wanna sleep with some random guy, as in her mind, and her husband's mind, that would be cheating. But it's not cheating if it's me, since I'm quote unquote unattractive. I'm at work and I will edit when possible, but cannot possibly respond to every comment. I appreciate all the support as I strongly felt that I was in the right. I won't feel guilty anymore, even if I was just feeling a little guilty. Edit 5. My wife has always been manipulated by her sister. Their parents were much older when my wife and my sister-in-law were born, and my sister-in-law was supposedly always good at getting her way. When their parents died, I think that my sister-in-law was even more domineering. 
We moved to a town over just for some space, but it hasn't helped much. I was an only child, so I don't quite understand their dynamic. I grew up pretty sheltered, but I had a good childhood and went to a good college where I was able to earn a master's degree. All right, folks, and our last letter is titled, I'm a 38 year old female and I took off to a hotel with my one year old baby. After another argument with my husband of four years, a male 38, we have been renovating his house, yes his, not ours, for years and it's been getting to me. I have been pregnant multiple times in those years and I'm currently pregnant again. The years and years of building, it's ruining my marriage. We have been to counseling and agreed to make a plan to have it all finished before the baby comes. Making a plan was terrible and getting him to sit down and take this serious meant that I had to nag and nag and nag for weeks. And with everything that I wanted to plan, his response was, nah, it doesn't matter that we don't have, for example, carpets on our floors. We now live on concrete. Asking friends or family for help doesn't work. He doesn't want help. And he also does not want to have work done by a contractor. Finally, last week, we made a plan and we're going to start today with finishing everything. That did not go well. Firstly, he decided this morning to have lunch with friends. Then he basically just dismissed everything that we were going to do. For example, cleaning, sanding down, using masking tape and covering the floors and furnitures before starting to paint the walls. In the end, I did it myself. I climbed up that ladder even though I'm pregnant and very dizzy and nauseous. When I got mad, he laughed at me. He always does that. He laughs when I'm upset, just completely dismisses and invalidates my feelings. So just this afternoon, I was done, absolutely done. I went upstairs, I took a shower, I booked a nice hotel, and I'm here with our eldest while pregnant. I am done with being put in the position of nagging wife. I am done with living on cold concrete floors. I am done being laughed at. I honestly do not know how to solve this. Anyone have any tips? 